We are go for liftoff in T minus 30. Hit the record button. Welcome, welcome, welcome to another episode of Italo's Black Tech Radio. My name is Italo speaking, and this is uh, another episode because um, this time around, I was I was the one that was behind, and you, you uh, my guest, who is already here, uh, welcome. What is? Can you, can you introduce yourself for a second? Thank you. My name is Mary Gonzalez, uh, also known as Keto Mama Meg, <laughs> and I'm excited to be here. Thank you so much. Uh, I met you on TikTok, where I tend to meet a lot of people. <laughs> yes, a lot of people. Bless the good, you. the good, and the bad, and the ugly sometimes. One hundred percent, one hundred, all part of the territory. Oh, so you're the- you're part of the good ones. <laughs> As are you, my friend. As are you. As are you. Thank you. And so, um, yeah, um, anyhow, well, I'm here. That's, that's the point because, uh, but you were, you have me, you were reading something this morning that was pretty, and I, and, and I grew up Catholic and, and, and I've heard that, um, is it songs, song of songs? Song of songs. Yes. Song of yeah. songs. There's a time yeah. for everything, right? Time for everything. There is a time for everything, you know, in, in this life where everything is in a hurry. We were talking about lightning speed and the, the faster the service, the faster the Wi-Fi, the faster the delivery. Everybody's fast, 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 fast. How about just slow down, catch a breath, you know, take pause, stop being in a hurry. Life was a lot more fun when things were not in so much of a hurry, you know, and maybe it's my age, you know, maybe it's the way I was raised that we enjoyed each other's company. You know, there was no internet once upon a time, believe it or not, no internet, right. no, no Wi-Fi, no computers, no cell phones. Um, life was less chaotic than it is now. Um, you had to actually open up an encyclopedia to get information. We didn't have, we didn't have keyboards to Google search. Uh, dial-ups and things like that came much later in the 80s, you know, and and people, I think, need to just pause, just pause, not stop, just pause for a moment and catch your breath, right. get your thoughts together, think about what you say, you know, think about what you listen to, think about what you read, um, just stop and think, just stop and think, inhale, exhale, you know, it's important yeah. to breathe. That's what I'm doing. That's what I'm doing today. <laughs> like, well, I can barely wait, breathe right now. <laughs> um, actually, there's somebody on TikTok that I, I'm, I've been following, and it's one of those uh, people that have like sound baths, and um, he has his breath breathing techniques. And you know, I know, I always know that breathing is good. I, you know, I've been told this over and over. <laughs> and I, I have somebody that always tells me it's like stop and yeah. breathe stop yeah. and breathe oh, and I never understand what he means it's like he means yeah. stop what you're saying stop what you're doing think about what you're saying think that's about it. what you're doing and that, that's it you know but I never listen to him and, <laughs> and now it's just like our heads are so buried onto our phone our tablets and devices. We don't even look up anymore. It's bad enough we don't breathe. We don't stop and look up. You know, life is passing us by in a hurry, in a hurry. And uh, well, you got to stop and look. Yeah, life is too beautiful, too precious. And time is promised to nobody, you know? And, and it's, it's something that we really need to consider come in 2022 time for change it's time for bold moves it's time for progress it's time to to reinvent yourself you know time to be in a different spot than you were this year some people are been in the same spot year after year after year you know what 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 do you want to do different what are you doing different 
don't get me wrong. It's wonderful to pray and everything, but what are you doing? You got to do. You can't just wish and pray and hope and dream. Yeah, you got to take action. You got to do something. Yeah. Right. So, um, what's what's going to be happening to, or I shouldn't say that. What do you expect in 2022, or what do you hope for? I pray that um, God continues to lead me to where I need to be. You know, I, I, I learned a lot about me in this year that prepared me for next. You know, I always say I'm working on my empire. You know, I, I, I've been working on some things, you know, possibly another book. You know, that's, I was never an author. I never wrote anything. And here I wrote a book, you know, and people are asking for next one. So that's a possibility um, to the ability to not punch a clock anymore for somebody else that that's going to come to an end very soon. Um, I see book tours. I see motivational speaking. I see, um, a lot of growth, a lot of travel things I was not able to do. Um, just because I'm 53 doesn't mean I know it all. I've seen it all. I've not seen anything yet. I'm just now getting started and, more open doors to possibilities of, of helping many more people. Um, a lot of paying it forward. You know, I don't, mm. money doesn't drive me, but it's a necessity um, to be able to help people the way I want to help. I want to build communities. I, I, I want to empower people. Things that we don't get taught in school. You know, we don't tell, self-esteem isn't taught in school. Vocational mm. schools aren't discussed. It's frowned upon, you know learn a craft, learn it well. You don't have to know 20 different things. Find the thing that you love. Focus on the thing you love, the thing that sets your soul on fire. You know, in this day and age, people are so wanting to please so many other people, do things for other people. And we forget what we want. We forget the things that we want to do. And uh, that doesn't make you happy. If you're not happy doing what you're doing, you need to change it. Because that's not your gift. Understand your gift. Understand your purpose. Live with intention, you know. Um, very important. You got to be happy. Um, I hear it all the time. We have one life to live. And I don't believe that. I, we live every single day that we're alive. And every day is an opportunity. And until the moment you no longer have breath, then that's when it stops. But until then, you have a decision to make every time you wake up. You know, and, and you, you decide you want to have a crappy attitude. You're going to have a crappy attitude. You, you, you want to get up and fight, fight, you know, do just, just that's all you can control is your attitude and your, in your reaction to things. And, and that's about all we can control. Nothing else, nothing yeah. else, nobody else. That's the problem with me. I, I, I'm, I'm working on that uh, control part, you know, like you want to control a situation and sometimes you have to let go and you have to I have to I should say I not you I <laughs> um and uh it's, it's, it's actually been it's been a weird year <laughs> let's just say weird I understand, I understand. <laughs> because uh 2020 was was uh yeah it was but it was it was yeah, it's a lot of things. Uh, last year, last year was uh, 2020, and everything stopped. It was like the world, yeah, stopped spinning. I, I always say that it's like they it stopped spinning it so it fast. Did. And you know why? You know why? You know, I think about that a lot. You know, 2020 was a year of devastation for most, a lot of people. Everything that everybody depended on was taken away everything in a time when people prayed for time if they only had more time yes. if i had more time i could you know That's go hard. back to school i could finish this book i could write this book i could do this i could do that <clears throat> god took everything away from you and i mean everything every distraction possible was taken away people had to go back home people forgot what it was like to be home People forgot what it's like to sit around a dinner table and look at one another, not the tops of your head, because everybody's so focused on their phone. 
it gave you a time to rethink, reevaluate, recharge, re, re, replan, refocus, you know, and in that time, everybody was looking at the bad instead of focusing on the opportunity that this was, you know, nature was happy. Nature got tired of us. Nature got tired of us. Birds were chirping more. Na everything. Nature was beautiful during, if you didn't pay attention to what was happening outside, mm -hmm. instead of worrying about what wasn't happening, and so many people worrying about things getting back to normal, you really want to go back to how things were? Was that that great that you wanted it to go back to normal? Birds were singing more than usual. All kinds of birds I was seeing that I didn't see before. Nature needed a break from us. <laughs> it truly did. Yeah. And that time was optimal time to take that online course. You had the time. You wanted changes. That was the time. And, and not too many people took advantage of that. Those that did got a running start when things began to open up. The ones that didn't do anything are still at the same. I need more time. This didn't work out. Well, it didn't work out because it wasn't supposed to. That wasn't, right. that's not destined for you, but people don't see outside that. And I think society is lost in many ways. There's, this world has no faith. This world is entitled, you know, yeah. everything is owed to, nobody owes you anything. Nobody owes you anything. And you got to work for yours. There's a lot of work ethic that lacks in this generation. Um, people have a headache. Oh, I'm not going to work. Oh, I don't feel like going to work. I'm not going to work. It's like, no, that's not how it works. You know, people want to start up at the top yeah. that way either. And so patience is something that's very much needed. And uh, mm -hmm. I just understand <laughs> on a different level, one that I didn't know before. You know? Mm -hmm. yeah. So since last year and now this year, I think I've seen a, a calmness since I, I, I think I met you, or I, well, me, meeting some, meeting you was meeting on TikTok, right? Okay. <clears throat> and um, I don't know, you've always appeared to me as someone who is very calm, <clears throat> very um, happy to see everybody. I, I love that part. Um, you're always greeting people. You acknowledge everybody who's in the room. Uh, you always um, have a kind word to say to everybody, right? Um, which is very unusual. It's very unusual. Let me just say that. Um, so, you know, whenever I, and you know, those rooms, you know, so those are the rooms and they're like party, party all the time or they're, Oh. You have the horns and da 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 da. Oh God! Um, <laughs> <laughs> you've seen those rooms. Grow, let's grow. Let's <laughs> grow let's <laughs> run everybody. Exit. Yeah. Stage left. Stage right. Yeah. I don't know. Let me just get out. Let me just get out. <laughs> yeah. So I just wanna, I just wanna acknowledge that you, that you, you bring something different Thank to you. to TikTok, and I hope that. Even though we're small, it yeah. it doesn't mean anything. It really doesn't mean anything in the other, in the afterlife. Let's just say it that way. That's it. <clears throat> I but uh, my faith has been tested too. My faith oh, wow. was tested too, and and this, it's been a long road to where I'm at today. Because, and then my dad was, um, I grew up Catholic, as you probably have heard before. <clears throat> and my dad yesterday was uh, El Dia de la Guadalupe, Virgen de la, la Virgen de Guadalupe Day, right. right? And so he asked me to come to church, which is Catholic, yeah. and I'm not allowed inside, right? Um, yeah. Because of my sexual preference. Mm. And, um, but I, I had to make peace with that part. Right. And I'm like, I'm not doing it for, for them. I'm doing it for my dad, who I, I had to go see because he was, um, he's, he's a believer. He's a, a devout Christian or devout Catholic. And so I have to um, meet him halfway. And I, luckily, when I got there, <laughs> I say luckily, <laughs> 
uh, it wasn't in the church. It wasn't. Uh, I just, I just sent uh, the, the wow. mass was mass was over, and now they went. They move on to the other the cat the church the school or whatever it was. Right. <clears throat> not that I I cannot step in to, inside the church anymore. That's not that's not it. <clears throat> but you know the hypocrisy would oh, be absolutely. to go inside and then uh, have communion when they don't accept my mm -hmm. kind. Let's put it that way too. And so whenever I hear people on TikTok and they're reading the Bible and they're reading the, and you do that, but I don't really, you know what I'm saying? Like I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm trying not to be judgmental I, and be. I understand. Because there's a message there. There's a message this morning that, that I needed to hear. Mm, what a blessing. And that's the thing, you know, I'm not the same person I was. You wouldn't recognize me three years ago. Physically, mentally, spiritually, I'm a completely, that person died. She died for this woman to birth, you know, and Catholic, being raised Catholic, been to Catholic school my whole life. I had a problem, not then, but as I grew up and went to church on my own and did things, there was so much hypocrisy within the four walls of that church. Everybody's in there praying, thanking God, blah, blah, blah. But the minute they step foot outside that church, moments after hallelujah and amen and thank you, God, they start talking about, did you see what so-and-so was wearing? Did you see? I was like, whoa. And that put me to pause. And I said, I don't like being defined by religion. I, I don't like being defined, period. I wasn't designed to fit in a label in a box or to be categorized. I took it upon myself, the faith that I was raised on, the belief that I was raised on. And, I, and, I'm, and, I'm a, and I am a woman of faith, great faith. I think I have enough faith for everybody that doesn't have faith, you know? I don't have to throw out Bible verses and scriptures. I don't know them by heart. That doesn't make me any less believer, you know? <clears throat> I... I have a problem with people having issues with other people and who should enter a church and who should not. That's not what God says to do. People take things and, 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 and misinterpret and, and create their own book, so to speak, their own rules and regulations. And for me, I'm not here to convert anybody. That's not my job. I'm not a theologian. I don't know what everything means in the Bible. I just started learning about reading a Bible three years ago. Catholic school didn't teach me how to read a Bible. Not once did we open up a Bible in eight years that I was there and they taught us what it meant. Instead, they asked us to take out the Bible as a punishment to write out Psalms 27. Whenever the class was acting up, that's the only time we took out the Bible and we had to write it out word for word. That's the only time we took out that Bible. Nobody sat down and said, this is what this means. This is what it says. Here's this book, that book. Didn't learn about that until I was 50 years old about the Bible. And I was like, wow. And so I don't push it on anybody, but because it is my platform and God's a big part of it, a huge part of it, I'm going to talk about him. People have a problem with that. There's a million other rooms they can go into on TikTok. They don't like it. Go go. I'm not, you were led here for X, Y, and Z. And then you have bozos and clowns who want to be smart alley about it. Swipe block. I don't have to deal with it. I don't go somewhere right. else. And I choose to use my, my social media platforms as an extension of my voice. I want to travel the world and want to see people. And I'm thinking here, I had to physically be in all of these places to share my story, but I don't. In, in, in a fingers reach, fingertips reach, turn on the Wi-Fi, turn on a platform, and I'm all over the world. People all over the world have seen a video of mine, read my book, bought my book, seen what I'm about. My, the, the, the fee travels much further than I could. I can reach many countries at the same time. And so I choose to use my platforms as that. <clears throat> Let me share my story. And, and the amazing thing is, that we think we're so alone when we go through something. We don't see anybody else going through it. And when you say your story, our stories have so many different names, so many different faces, ages, 
times in your lives. And I think if more people shared their story and let a whole lot of other people see that they're not alone, I truly believe that's life changing. It's impactful. It's inspiring because people need to hear we've all gone through something. All of us have gone through something, some worse than others. Who are we to judge what somebody's doing and not doing? Who are we to judge how they live their life and you live yours? Mind your business. Take care of you. There's enough to worry about you than you are worrying about everybody else. And, mm-hmm. and I just think share your story can help many people. People complain about making change in the world. Why not be the change? Be the change you want to see in the world. Do something. Don't just talk about it. And so me being who I used to be, the shy person who couldn't talk to anybody. I walked out of speech class in school because I couldn't talk in front of a group of people. Now I want to stand in the stage in the stadium with thousands in the audience and talk. I'm like, who, who are you? You know, I, when, when self-love is everything. Self-love is everything. It's empowering. It gives you confidence. It allows you to, to truly be who you are. And when you love yourself, you don't need outside validations. You don't need that outside love. You don't need other things to make you happy. Everything, and I mean everything, stems from self. Everything mm-hmm. else is extra. Everything else is extra. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So what is, the, what is one part of your, of your story that you want people to, to know? Because you said you wrote a, a book. Was that uh, your, your life story? It was my life, you know, um, man, there's so much, um, quick synopsis. Yeah, that's, what I, that's what I was careful to ask the question in, in a way where oh, which can... parts, you know. <laughs> yeah, no, you ask whatever you like. I'm as transparent as can be. <laughs> I'm, I'm okay talking with whatever, whatever it is that needs to be spoken about. But I was uh, 49 years old at the time. And I had lost my mother three years prior to that, my grandmother five years prior to that. And my boss, who is very ill, who was like a father to me for 16 years when I worked with, as I worked for him, I was nearly 300 pounds. You know, I was a mess. I was in a 26 year toxic, verbally abusive marriage for 26 years. I not knowing the demons he had. I didn't know about drug use. I didn't know he was an alcoholic until later on. I grew up very in a very overprotective home, very naive. I went from home to marriage. The husband was my first and only to date, first and only. Um, And so being raised that strict, I didn't know about life. I wasn't allowed to go spend the night at people's houses and go to the mall and hang out with friends. That was not allowed, you know, very strict household. Um, and so the, a lot of the things I learned, I learned as I went along, you know, and in, in our culture, in our home, you don't question your parents. You don't argue with your parents. You don't raise your voice to your parents. You don't speak about birds and bees. You don't speak about love. You don't see affection in the home. You don't ask questions. It's respected. You keep your mouth shut. That's it. Whatever happened in the home stayed in the home. Nobody knew anybody's business. It was, that's just how we always raised. And I carried that with me into adulthood. Um, And so when uh, the only great time in those 26 years was the first two years. After that, it was, I left long before that marriage ended. But because I was faithful and because I was true to my vows, never went outside the marriage, whatever happened in the home, stayed in the home. Nobody knew what was going on in my home. Nobody knew what I was going through. Nobody had any idea of how much I was in. I was broken and devastated. I would go in my closet and cry, bury my face in the pillow so the kids wouldn't hear me. I didn't tell my mom. I didn't know my grandmother. Nobody knew. It wasn't for them to know. And there was a shame to it. I didn't want anybody to know what I was going through. And so I kept it to myself, kept it to myself. Here I am trying to juggle three jobs just to stay afloat because he chose not to go to work. He didn't feel like going to work. I didn't have that luxury. I had two little ones. It wasn't their responsibility that I chose that man to be their father. It wasn't their fault. And not once did I ever 
speak badly about their father to him. I never threw him under the bus to anybody, to nobody. And it's a normal uh, thing because I would have been like, oh, (laughs) I I, I appreciate that you didn't do that because, um, yeah, I appreciate that because my mom was totally opposite. (laughs) Oh, no. You know, and, and I thought what what. I didn't, I was raising somebody's wife and I was raising somebody's husband. I didn't want them to carry that in their grown up life. You know, the kids see and hear more than you think, you know, and that's the part that broke my heart. Here I am in the closet crying, hoping that they didn't hear me, but they heard things that no child should have heard and how he talked to me and how I just sat there and took it, you know, um, it was just that way. And, and even out in public, so I was, a, I was great at keeping that smile. If I smile, nobody would ask me anything. If I looked happy, nobody would ever suspect anything. Nobody knew. Nobody knew until this book came out. And they're like, oh, my God. Oh, my God. You know, that's just how I was, you know. And um, when I finally began to take care of me, I was 49. And it was, I had a war room moment in my closet. I, I just couldn't anymore. I attempted suicide once and, 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 and God had other plans. God had other plans. And in that closet, I laid it all out on the table. I was crying. I was in pain. I was a heart attack waiting to happen. Chest pains were bad. I couldn't feel my left arm. I was a mess. And I'm sitting in their closet crying, sitting on top of my shoes with my face buried in my pillow and just, mom, what do I do? God, what do I do? You scared me for a reason. What do I do? I'm tired. I'm tired. And I, I don't know if I fell asleep or passed out in the closet, but when I woke up and I walked out, I walked out a different woman. I walked out a different woman who I was remained in that closet. Mm. Once I out. And um, I asked for a prayer. I asked for to show me, lead me, teach me. Where do I go? I walked to the computer. I'm here almost 300 pounds, you know, and and this word keto pops up on my screen. And I'm like, what is this? Never seen it, never heard it. And and the thing about certain social media platforms, unless you search something, it's not going to pop up on your feed. I never didn't know what that was. It was a, a program on how to lose weight. I was like, what? You can eat bacon. It said egg, steak, bacon. It had me at bacon. I didn't have to read any further. <laughs> I love right. me some bacon. And I thought, how clear of a message? What more answer to a prayer can you get with it? Bold print letters on the front of your screen. Here it is. And from that moment forward, I never looked back. Never looked back. I asked for an answer. There it was. I wasn't going to do wrong by my mother. And I wasn't going to do wrong by God. I said, I'm going to pay attention. And I did. And it was life changing. What that decision did for me, here I am thinking it's about losing weight. But while I was losing weight, I ended up losing 147 pounds total, you know, just by changing how I ate. In losing weight, I gained confidence, Mm -hmm. self love, oh, self love. Um, I began to create standards for myself. And I began to see what I was no longer wanting to tolerate. So it opened my eyes to everything else that needed opening. And I understood just four months later when I turned 50, I had enough. I had enough. This was no longer acceptable. And I knew he loved me. He just didn't know how to show me. But he loved his demons more than he loved me. And I wasn't willing to give him another 26 years of my life. And I didn't, I didn't. Um, Yeah. And it just, I was done. I was done. Several months later, I, it was time. I said, it's, it's time you need to go. I didn't ask him. I said, you need to go. And there was no more arguing. There was no screaming matches. Although he did most of the screaming. I just stood there. I became very good at watching his mouth do this and not listen to a damn thing he was saying mm-hmm. He'd be right in my face and tuned him out. So 26 yeah. years taught me that 
Do I regret the 26 years? No. Would I do it all over again? Yes. That was a 26 year lesson. It was a 26 year boot camp. That boot camp was teaching me, preparing me for the next man who was worthy of the gift that I was and, and understood that. Any resentful anger? No. I left in peace. He left me in pieces, but I left in peace, you know? Oh, and I was that like, right there. It's yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Left me in peace and prayed about it, let him go. And from the moment I asked him to leave, he died for me. That was it. I had, and I knew that time was going to come. I just didn't know when it was going to happen or how it was going to happen, but I knew it was going to happen. And when it did, I put religion aside because, you know, that's not supposed to be done. You're supposed to stick to your man and till death do you part. But I'm like death by whose hands, his or God's. I was, I was uh, darned if I was going to go at his hands, although he never laid a hand on me, but it came close. And I said, no, this is not acceptable. I wasn't raised in the thirties, forties, fifties, sixties. This is not acceptable. And when the time came for me for this to end, I wanted to make sure that I crossed every T and dotted every I. Let's go to counseling. Let's go to church. Let's do this. Let's do that. I always said, let's. I never said, you need to go. I said, let's go. And all this time I was realizing it was me that wanted it to work. And I trained that behavior. So I can't even be fully mad at him. You know, I can't just say, it would have been easy to say it's all his fault wash my hands of it. It's all your fault. No, no, no. I have to own my, my responsibility in that relationship of what I have allowed for so long. That's a tough pill to swallow, tough pill to swallow. And when I, when I finally came to an agreement with my heart and my soul, and I said, it's time to go, I was going to leave with nothing left unsaid with no possibility, possibility that was offered. I was done. I was done and never looked back from the moment I asked him to leave. I never once answered his phone call, answered a text message. Didn't want it. It was done. There was nothing more to be said. And the only other time I spoke to him was uh, when the divorce was done. That was it. He called to make sure I was okay. And I thought it was my son who was calling because it was during Hurricane Dorian, my first hurricane when I moved to Florida. And they wanted to make sure I was, everybody in California was calling me to make sure I was okay. And I picked up the phone and it was him. First time I heard his voice in six months and I cringed, cringed. Mm-hmm. He's, I'm just calling to make sure you're okay. I said, I'm the best I've been in 26 years. And I hung up. I didn't wait for a response. <laughs> didn't mean <nothing. laughs> I'm the best I've ever been in 26 years. Yeah. Welcome back. Welcome back. Um, Thank you. So we're gonna have to cut this one short, <laughs> but, uh, because we can we can spend um, more time next time. Absolutely. But uh, what is the name of your book? Mine. It's called Claiming My Soul. Uh, it's available on Amazon. Um, I'm blessed to say that it hit the top 50 at some point. I was I wasn't even looking for that, you know, but it's it's available in both paperback and e-version. Um, it's available on Amazon, Barnes and Noble, Target.com, anywhere pretty much books are sold. Um, it, it's a gift that keeps on giving. You know, I, I never saw this coming. Never considered myself to be an author. Like I said, I couldn't even write an essay to save my life in school. And here I wrote a book in a month. In a month. Somebody popped into my live and said, you should write a book. I said, yeah, you're crazy. I've never written anything in my life, you know? And uh, you know, you don't understand. I, I'm a part owner of a publishing company. I want to invest in your book. I was like, what? Like, you get stuff told all the time. You know, I don't believe everything I hear. So as he's talking, I'm checking him out. I'm like, oh my God, this guy's legit. So we scheduled a Zoom meeting the next day and I'm writing a book that I never saw coming. And it flowed out in a month. I, there was no second, third or fourth draft. This was it. The way it came is how it, it came out. Uh, no, no edits, no, no going back. It just, even that was by divine appointment. It was a blessing. You know, I, I for something to flow like that in a month's time, I was like, dang, I guess I am a writer. <laughs> right. <laughs> but but it, it's, it's, it's been a blessing and, and I thank people who have already purchased it. 
um, who are gifting it for the holidays. I was like, oh my gosh, this is, this is insane, you know, and yeah. it's a blessing. It's a blessing. You're here, you're here, you're here from here, guys. It's available <laughs> now. Christmas is coming. <laughs> uh, you did, you said something about, you didn't see that coming. Is that a title? No, the, uh, the title's claiming my soul, but I did. That's a great title for a book, actually. I mean, no, this, the reason I'm saying is because you said it and I was laughing because the song that I started the song, I started, I started a podcast with a song. Oh. I thought I titled the song, did you see that coming? Because that's why oh, I, that's so crazy. I was laughing. I'm like, that's funny. But <laughs> I didn't know if it was a title or something because you oh, said it. A title about something now. Th th that's my process. I, I'll hear something. I'm like, oh, I like that. Yeah. I never had that side of me. You know, I sleep with notepads under my pillow and a pen in case an idea comes in the middle of the night. I write it down. I, I don't have to turn on the lights. I don't have to open my eyes. It's just a reach, grab, and write. I, I can decipher it later because if I don't write it down, the moment will be gone. It will be forgotten. Yeah, and for that's me, true. That is know, very true. So true. And for me, those are answers to prayers that I've asked God for. Yeah, I'm going to get up at one o'clock, two o'clock, three o'clock in the morning and write it down. It's not a crazy idea. God doesn't put crazy in your head. Those crazy ideas that we think are crazy are things that we once upon a time prayed for. Mm. Once upon a time we prayed for, but we didn't pay attention because we just dismissed it as a crazy thought. It takes crazy to do something different. It takes crazy to create change. It takes crazy to create a legacy. And it takes crazy to faith to, to, to believe that you can. And if your dreams don't scare you, they're not big enough. We're not designed to live in, in, in mediocrity. We're not designed to settle. We were designed to be living in a life of abundance. And that doesn't always relate to money. People relate everything to money. It does not. I'm abundant in love, abundant in friends, abundant in life, abundant in how many people pray for me. That's a gift. When people pray for you daily, you people you don't even know. I wake up to messages that are of Bible scriptures and prayer and song. And it's like, man, my cup runneth over every morning, every morning. And what can I say? It's, it's an absolute blessing to people to open their doors to their home. Come stay with me. Come stay. I'm like, what? Since I, when I made the decision, when the, is how I ended up in Florida in November, at some point I was asked to move to Florida. I've never been anywhere outside my, the vicinity of my home, never ventured out, never traveled, never did anything. At this point, the kids are grown. They have their own life. I'm now going through a divorce. My boss passed away. I had a career for 30 years that I loved. It was a great check, great paycheck, but I wasn't happy. I wasn't happy. Everybody that ever meant anything to me passed away. And it was just my sister, my two children, and my two grandchildren. And there I was for the first time alone. First time in my life I'm alone, you know? And I thought, what do I do? And this opportunity came and I didn't even think about it twice. So I wrote my first ever resignation letter, gave 30 days notice to my landlord, sold everything I owned, everything. I didn't keep anything in storage, sold my car, sold everything that I thought I loved, objects and things that I swore I would never let go of. It was no problem. I was no longer attached to things. <clears throat> things no longer meant anything. And I was just selling, giving away everything. At 50, at 49 years old, mm -hmm. 50 years old, I'm sorry. I moved to Florida with one suitcase, one suitcase, 50 years into one suitcase. That's all I took with me. Didn't keep anything else. Didn't need anything else. I was, I didn't need things anymore. I have less now, not even making a quarter of what I was making. This is the happiest I've ever been. Right. Isn't that Everything. funny? Oh, man, I never go without, never go without. And my life has been since I left California. Hey, come stay with me. I'm like what? They know my situation. I have no job. Come stay with me. Come stay with me. Come stay with me. 
I've been living out of a suitcase since I left California and I love it. Absolutely love it. And I understand that every time I end up in somebody's house, there's reason. I know the assignment when my feet set foot in that home, why I'm there. And when that job is done, clear as day, I get in my ear, it's time to go. And I'm like, I like it here. <laughs> I don't want to go. It's time for you to go. My next question is, where do I go? Next day, I get a phone call. I want you to come stay with me. Just like that. Just like that is how my life has been in the last three years. Come stay here. Come stay here. Come stay here. And I don't question it. I'm not afraid. And I go where I'm led. And there's always purpose. There's always purpose. And being here in the country, being a city girl my whole life, moving to the country, an Amish country at that, where you see horses and buggies, Amish people running in the streets, you know, in, in their garb and, and a different piece here that was very much needed without the distractions of the city. And in this place, I was able to write my book. In this place, I was able to hear my thoughts. In this place, I was able to hear myself breathe. In this place, I was able to feel my heartbeat without the distraction and the noise of the world. I got to see seasons, all four seasons for the first time in my life. I got to experience snow, things I've never experienced. I'm 50, now three years old and experiencing things for the first time in my life and seeing things through childlike eyes. What a blessing, what a blessing. Things that people take for granted. Mm -mm. I always look towards the heavens. Every time I go outside, I look towards the heavens and, and, and look at the creation that God created today, a sunrise or even a sunset. I'm looking for answers everywhere I go, everywhere. There are answers in the, in, in the wind going through the trees. There's an answer when you see a butterfly. There's an answer when I see it. certain things that mean something to me. Those are all answers, but we dismiss them. We don't even realize the answers we're getting. We're too, too oblivious to the outside noise. Right. Or distracted by the uh, 5G and the yeah, high speeds. Absolutely. absolutely. <laughs> People are too worried to take a picture to post. Their life is all about the story on a platform. The highlight they're going to put. Some moments are meant just for you and not to be shared. Right. With Some like people it, are too worried about I getting used to think, I used to think. I used to think the same way. Yeah. Oh, this will be hashtag da 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 hashtag New York hashtag Chicago hashtag hash that will be like and yeah. then mean, meanwhile the person I was with at the time was like I'm waiting for you to get here so we mm -hmm. can enjoy it right why are we why why are you trying it so hard to capture right. the moment in a video That's capture it. the moment in a picture yeah. I'm here and you're That's not true. That's it <laughs> That's very true so so true and being in the public eye and being that everything I do no well not everything the things that I want people to know is what gets put out there people don't have to know everything about me I can keep things private you know and so I choose what people want to hear I choose what I want people to know about me you don't need to know everything there's that private scene that, that that's mine that's sacred nobody can right. have it. that's mine and so we need to enjoy more and not worrying about the next post, you know, and, and the next, and, and I've learned that a lot of things in social media aren't true. A lot of people create, oh, yeah. a, a lot of people create this happiness. Well, deep down inside, they're really sad people living vicariously through others, you know, and the beautiful thing about being transparent is you own everything about you you own your flaws your 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 failures which i don't even think exist in my opinion failures are not failing failures are lessons and if you learn the lessons it's not a fail you know right it's just not and and if people would just live each day as if it were their last things would change things would change and i in this whole process i learned i can't change people i can't fix people it's not my job Nope. As, as I tried to fix him for 26 years, I needed fixing. I needed to fix me. And then I saw the reality for what it was. So I can't change people. I can't fix people, but I can share my story. And if my story can create a spark of inspiration, a shift in your mind 
to allow yourself, give yourself the permission you need to be okay with dealing with you, taking care of you, loving you. I've done my job. I've done my job. I, I, I don't expect anything from anybody. I don't. And I was once in their situation. You know, I, I've learned to accept people where they are and love them for where they are. Um, but let them know that that's, a, that's a tough one for me. It's very tough. Yeah. And this is why I don't have the expectations. My level of expectation is beyond for me, not for somebody else. Because my level of expectation is very different from somebody else's. And you can't expect somebody to be happy when they're not happy. You can't expect somebody to see what you see when they're still not dealing with what they're dealing with mm -hmm. and, and, and accept them, embrace them and love on them. And sometimes you got to love people from a distance. Yeah. They can't be in my circle. You can't mm -hmm. be in my energy. You cannot, I don't allow you to steal my joy. I don't mm -hmm. allow you to drown, let me drown with you. I don't choose that anymore. You want to drown? Drown. Misery loves company. Misery yeah. loves attention. Mm -hmm. And I, I'm very careful as to where my energy is spent and who I surround myself with. I'm not drowning with the baby. I'm not right. doing it. And you can love me from a distance and you can watch from another balcony, but you're not going to sit at my table. Mm -mm. Mm -hmm. No, sir. No, ma'am. Well, thank you, Mari. I don't know. You have to go. You're looking at the I clock. Know, I, I, can so see, <laughs> I can see your eyes going like. Da, da, da. My eyes are like, my, I look everywhere when I speak. You know, I just, I didn't even look at the time, but I'm looking, I'm like, oh, shoot. Yep. <laughs> yeah, we got to go. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, I do want to thank you. I just want to say, while well, I'm, I'm we're still on the air, that I, this will be my last, this will be my last podcast for the year. So I want to wish everybody uh, happy holidays. I don't say Merry Christmas no more. I just say happy holidays. Love that. Uh, happy New Year and Kwanzaa and whatever else you, you okay. decide to celebrate. Uh, I've decided also to make a change next year. So you will be updated when the time is, when the time comes. Let's nice. just put it that way. But what thank you for no, coming. thank you for allowing me to be an end a punctuation mark at the end of this year yeah, for you. That yeah, that's exactly it. <laughs> that means a lot to me. It truly, truly does. I thank God for crossing you in my path. There's reasons why our paths were crossed. And I thank you for the opportunity to share my story, uh, be here with you. Um, and I'm a better person because I know you. And, and I appreciate that. I appreciate that. And continue doing what you do. Don't lose yourself in the process. Don't lose yourself in what others think of you. Very important Thanks. to know that. So that, that's what, that, was, that was happening mm. again. It was, a, it was happening last year. It's happening again this year. So I'm like, you know what? It's Don't time to go. Yourself. It is. <laughs> and the fact that you recognize that, that's a big step for you. Yeah. And, and one that you, good for it's you. It's a good thing. It's a good thing. It's that not a bad a thing. wonderful thing. Absolutely. Never apologize for that. Right. Never apologize for I that. Survived, I survived 25 years of my life without the internet, social media, TikTok, so, <laughs> and YouTube. Amen. At the end of the day, these are just platform. It's exactly. just a platform. It's just an app. My life does not revolve around an app. It does mm -hmm. not. Mm -hmm. your life. It'll be here when you get here. And if it's not, it's not. Big deal. Move on. Right. Well, live your life. Not watch it. <laughs> mm. <laughs> that's a good one too yeah. I'm going to take uh, so many things out of this and make it <laughs> <start, right? laughs> please do please do I'm honored I'm truly honored may God continue to bless you and all your endeavors and keep doing what you're doing people need to hear that people need to hear what you have likewise. to say likewise and I know that you're going to Chicago you're going to have so much fun thank you I'm excited I can't wait I can't I'm wait I'm yeah. yeah it's going to be fun uh, thank you and I pray that Continued success for you. Next year is going to be a big year for you. Um, power moves, things like that. Stay true to who you are, unapologetically so. Stand your ground, baby. Stand your ground. Only God yeah. can judge nobody else. Nobody else. Yeah. Take a grain of salt. You good. I know You're there's good. no, there's no, um, there's, there's many more words we can say, but. 
I know, like the, I gotta get like, 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 like the white rabbit, like. <laughs> I, know, I, know. I love it. I appreciate I love you, my friend. Thank you so much. May God bless you. And until next time. Until okay, next time. You too. <laughs> Your goal for liftoff in T minus 30. Hit the record button.